The Lord be with you. Warm welcome to you this morning. Obviously, we're back in the sanctuary, which is nice to be back here. Uh, I think it looks nice, and thank you to everyone who's been helping with that. A uh, couple of announcements. We have a voters meeting Sunday uh, today after the service at 10.30, and then there's a potluck after that. So please consider staying for that. Uh, we also have I guess we're having uh, light the night or trunk or treat uh, Halloween night at uh, six or six thirty, I think. Uh, we have our youth group is going to the pumpkin farm uh, this afternoon at eleven forty-five. Uh, we have a worship planning meeting on Wednesday at five p.m. at Church Council Farms at six thirty, and we have the ECC hosting a table at Adventure Night at Floyd Park next Saturday. 8 p.m. And uh, let's see, Nancy. Good morning. I want to talk to you about uh, Samaritan's Purse and the Christmas show boxes that we do. Um, again, we're going to this paper here. Um, are you all familiar with the Samaritan's Purse and the shoe box, the red and green? Um, they go to uh, third world countries to underprivileged children. Um, the gift boxes are from ages 2 to 14, so four to um, see. The boxes are going to be used in the back of the day. Um, so you can return them by November 13th, so that gives you about three weeks or so. Um, there will be a, a label that comes inside of the box. On the back of the label are gift ideas. Um, so I do need to refer to the link website that kind of um, you can do better each year because I thought it was really nice. Um, I like to buy for the boys that they have the kind of short things that they're a little hard to get out for. But if you think about what this means in the third world country, it's probably a water bottle to get the lid. Um, but you can stuff it with pencils and anything in there for a kid of your age that you like to do for. And you stuff the animals, so the kids love that. You don't have to spend a lot of Dollar Kitty, Dollar General. You can buy slight new, you know, slight new things from secondhand stores. Whatever you think kids would like, um, it was in your heart to share with other children. And who doesn't love those boxes? So we'll have these in the back, um, and then we have November uh, November 13th. So All right. Thank you very much. And our order of service is printed for you, and uh, we begin with him. You know, Holy God, we pray this thy name.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me for my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, Lord, merciful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and just deserve your temple and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them. Confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We seek to enjoy it together. Let me remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, which you have redeemed to be the pride of your heritage. Remember this, O Lord, how the enemy stops, and the foolish people's reminders to man. Do not deliver the soul of your dove to the wild beast. Do not commit the lives of your Lord of Christ. Let not the downtrodden turn back to shame. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Have your heart for the Arise, O God, to defend your cross. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of all, which you have redeemed to be the fire of your heritage. Thank <laughs> you.
be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, Almighty and everlasting God, you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may direct and govern our hearts in all things, that we may preserve and steadfast faith and confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading comes from Genesis chapter 32. The same night Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children across the floor of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip up, and Jacob's hip was put out of joy, and he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Pinion, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Our epistle reading is from the Second Timothy chapters three and four. As for you, continue what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and how from childhood you have been educated with the sacred truth, which you are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be confident, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, review, and exhort, and complete patience and teaching. For well, the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears that they will appeal to themselves, teachers who suit to their own passion, and will turn away from listening to the truth and walk it off in the midst. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise to reading the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Jesus told them a parable of the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. But afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continued coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. And will not God give justice to his own right? Who brought him day and night? Will he delay over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? 
This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith into the word of the last name of truth. I am the issue of one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the behalf of the Father of the world of us, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God who is not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the conscious heart. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who will make the Father and the Son together as worship in the Lord God, who is called by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and outside the church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I will the resurrection of the dead. In the light of the world to come. Amen. You may be seen as the memo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now you've seen wrestling matches before. You've seen them on TV, even those uh, fake ones where the outcome is already predetermined. 
Uh, many people find it quite entertaining. And then there are those wrestling matches that aren't so scripted, where it depends on the weight class and their skill and ability. And of course, we've all seen children wrestle around. It usually seems that the biggest and the strongest person wins a wrestling match. Now, there are the exceptions. Occasionally, a smaller, weaker individual who has certain skills or knowledge can defeat a larger opponent. But oftentimes, the bigger opponent wins. In our Old Testament lesson, Jacob is literally wrestling with God. Now in this reading from Genesis, it seems rather strange and fantastic. Jacob wrestles with God himself. How can this be? Now remember what has been going on in Jacob's life. Jacob was born as a twin, and he comes out second holding on to his brother's heel. That's why he's named Jacob. Jacob now is on the run, and the Lord had promised to give him the inheritance of his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac, but being impatient, he stole it from his brother for a bowl of porridge. Now his brother was pursuing him with an army, and he didn't know if he would live or die, whether his family would survive. You may also recall the situation with his father-in-law. He goes out to find a wife, and he falls in love, and he agrees to work for seven years so he can earn the right to marry his love. On the wedding night, he discovers he wasn't given his bride, rather he was given her sister. So then he has to work another seven years to get his bride. He ends up with two wives, one whom he loves and one, well, not so much that he loved. So just prior to wrestling with God, Jacob is now preparing to meet with his brother Esau, and he is afraid that Esau will take revenge, kill his family, kill his servants, take his herd and his possessions, so in verse 11, Jacob prays, Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he may come and attack me. The mother is with the children. So Jacob divided up his family into two camps so that it would be harder for Esau to kill his entire family. And then Jacob went off alone. And this brings us up to verse 24 from our reading. And Jacob was let alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Jacob was wrestling with God over his predicament. Now, if Jacob did not, in fact, face certain death, he certainly feared that he and his family would be killed. It was a matter of life and death for him. Now, you may have never had your brother or sister threaten to kill you, but you, many of you, have faced serious situations. You have had situations that seemed as serious as death itself. And in fact, some of you have faced a life and death situation. Maybe you faced losing a job and you didn't know how you'd provide for your family. Or you had a major life change and you realize from that moment on your life would never be the same and you weren't quite sure how you would get on. Maybe a family member suffered an accident or was diagnosed with a serious or a terminal illness. Maybe it was yourself who had an accident or was diagnosed with a critical medical problem. At these moments, just like Jacob, you are in the midst of a life and a death struggle. 
Life and death, this is the sort of situation Jacob found himself in. So Jacob, in his crisis, wrestles with God himself. Now keep in mind that Jacob had received the promise given to Abraham and to Isaac that his descendants would be as numerous as the grains of sand, that his descendants would be the Lord's own people, that the promised Savior would be a descendant of Jacob. Yet Jacob was facing his existential crisis. If his family were killed, if he were killed, how could God fulfill his promise? You may recall that Abraham faced a similar situation. God called him out of his homeland to go to a land he did not know, and he promised to make him into a great nation. Yet Abraham and his wife were unable to bear children. And finally, when they were old and well beyond the age of childbearing, the Lord told them that they would have a son to fulfill the promise. Sarah, his wife, found the situation so hilarious she began laughing in front of the Lord. And that's why their son was named Isaac. Then a little bit later on, once the boy had grown, God told Abraham to take Isaac on top of the mountain and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. How would God fulfill his promise? The Lord told him to take his only son and kill him. Yet the book of Hebrews tells us that Abraham believed by faith that even if this were to happen, the Lord would raise his son back to life from the ashes. Jacob, of course, knew the story. He knew very well what had happened with Abraham. He also knew what had happened with Isaac. But you wonder right now, did Jacob realize his situation was exactly the same as his father and his grandfather? It did not seem to Jacob that the Lord would be fulfilling his promise to make him into a great nation. Now, if you take a look at Jacob from a, the perspective of this world, Jacob does not seem to be as successful as his brother. Esau was a manly man. He was a man's man. He was a hunter. He was a warrior. He created his own kingdom. He had wives and many children. He had an army. He was well respected by the people. Jacob, on the other hand, was a little bit different. He was a softer figure. He wasn't hairy like his brother. He was more bookish. He hung around the tents with the women, listening to them and studying. We know that his father preferred his brother Esau to receive the inheritance. After all, who would you pick? Would you pick the manly man, or would you pick the bookish boy who rather hang around in the kitchen. Yet you see, the Lord chose differently than the squirrel. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 25 says, The foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. But at this moment, confronted by facing his brother Esau, Jacob may have wondered if God were right in picking him. So what does Jacob do? He wrestles with God. Now, what does it mean to wrestle with God? In this text, Jacob literally wrestled with a physical incarnation of God. Jacob is wrestling with the pre-incarnate Christ, who is actually his promised descendant. Now, how this can be is truly mind-boggling. Jacob was wrestling with Jesus. And they wrestled throughout the night. Verse 25 says, When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put on a joint as he wrestled with him. Well, I don't know if any of you have had a joint 
out of socket before a dislocated shoulder or a dislocated foot. It's incredibly painful. Jacob is injured. That in his pain and suffering, he does not let go. His hip is dislocated, his muscles are burning in pain, and Jacob will not let go. Verse 26, the man says, let me go. And Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You see, it seems as if Jacob is about to be cursed, for his brother Esau approaches with an army. So Jacob grabs a hold of God, literally, and asks him for a blessing. The Lord indeed gives Jacob a blessing. This blessing confirms that he will receive the promise given to Abraham and Isaac. The Lord said, what is your name? And he replied, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Imagine that Jacob wrestled with God and he won. How can that be? Jacob then leaves that place and names it Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. Jacob saw God face to face. He saw God face to face and he lived. And he not only lived, but he received a blessing. Jacob is now called Israel, and he is the father of a great nation through which his and our Savior came. So what does it mean for us to wrestle with God? It means for us to cling to the Lord God and his promises. It means to grab a hold of Jesus and to remind him to be faithful to the promises that he has given to you. You see, Jacob wrestling with God is not an act of defiance. Rather, it is an act of faith, and it serves as an example for us. Now, we're approaching the Reformation, so it may be appropriate to have a quotation from Martin Luther. Luther says, such examples teach us that faith should not yield or cease urging or pressing on, even when it is already feeling God's wrath and not only sin and death. This is the power and the strength of the Spirit. So you still might be wondering, what does this mean for us? When you feel as if nothing is going right in your life, when you feel as if God has abandoned you, if you, that you are out of touch with God. When you feel as if your life as you knew it is over. Or when you receive some horrible news, cling to the promises of God. Do not let God go. You need to wrestle with God. Our Lord has made us many, many promises. In your baptism, the Lord gave you a name, just like he gave Jacob the name Israel. In your baptism, God named you, he gave you his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we heard in the epistle reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 last week, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The Lord gave you his name, and the Lord cannot deny himself. This means that the Lord cannot deny you, because you bear God's name. And even when we are faithless, when our faith falters, when we have doubts, our Lord Jesus is faithful for us. When Jacob wrestled with God, he was, in effect, causing God to fight against God. Jacob was holding on to the Lord's word. He was holding the Lord's word against him. Jacob was almost saying to God, look, you promised me 
you better deliver on what you promised. Jacob captured the Lord with his own words. The Lord loves when his people remind him of his promises. To remind God of his word, to remind God of his promises, is faith. Our Lord has promised that our sins have been forgiven because of Jesus' death on the cross. Because Jesus, because of Jesus, the Lord considers you to be righteous and holy. And because Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, you too shall rise again with your own body. You see, death cannot defeat you. Oftentimes it appears that the moment of death is when the Lord is no longer fulfilling his promises. He didn't heal us. He didn't keep us safe because we died. Yet you see, this is not the case at all. Rather, the Lord uses our death to bring us to be with him forever, to give us many more blessings. You see, even death itself cannot separate us from our Lord Jesus. As we journey in this life, we will undoubtedly face many moments when it seems as if the Lord is not fulfilling his promises. You will experience hardships, you will experience failure, sadness, grief, and pain in this world. And there are times when it may seem that nothing is going your way. Times when you receive bad news about your loved one or about yourself. And at those moments, we are tempted to think that our Lord has abandoned us. In fact, that's what the devil tells us, that God has left us behind. We are tempted to think that the Lord is not fulfilling his promise. And at those moments, just when you feel as if God has left you, wrestle with God, grab a hold of God and cling to his promises, Remind God of what he has promised you. Capture Jesus in his word. The Lord has promised you that he will work all things for your good. So remind Jesus of the promises he has made to you. And just like Jacob, we also see God face to face. In just a few moments, we are going to go to the Lord's altar where we will receive his true body and the true blood of Jesus himself. In the hymnal, there is a song in the communion section called, Here, O my Lord, I see you face to face. And the song continues, Here I would touch and handle things unseen. When we go up to the Lord's Supper, we see our Lord Jesus face to face. We take hold of Jesus with our hands to receive his blessing and his promise. Faith wrestles with God. Cling to Jesus. Capture Jesus in his word. Capture Jesus in his promises. Go in peace and wrestle with God. Amen. Please rise from your
Let's pray for the whole church of God and Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the righteous call to you day and night, and you answer them speedily. Grant us faith to rest securely in your mercy, and justice as we await the coming of the Son of Man. Lord, in your mercy, Judge of all, grant justice according to your word to those who saw the wrong. Give wisdom and understanding to the leaders of all nations, especially our own, that they may punish evil and the Lord of good, fearing God and respecting man. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, because you need us to offer mercy, deliver us from evil. Especially we beg you to keep the lives of those who face sickness, injuries, and troubles, including John. Matthew, Bob, Debbie, Johnny, and Marjorie, Chris, the family of Kathy, the family of her son, Charlie, Debbie, Harry, and the family of Christ. Lord, Jesus, Lord God, you behold our going in and our coming out, both now and forever. Grant us repentance heart as we approach your altar this day. That confident in your protection and grace, we may receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for our good. May this pleasure of salvation preserve our life, keep us from all evil, and guard us in our ways. Lord, we Gracious Lord, you desire to come to us in prayer and not lose heart in the midst of suffering. As we struggle with many afflictions, in this veil of tears, strengthen us by the suffering and cross of your Son. Have mercy on us when our spirits fail, and we are overwhelmed by despair. Renew our faith by the proclamation of the gospel to cry to you in the hope of day and night. You are our keeper. Grant us when death draws near, and grant that we would be found faithful in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we bless our gifts and offerings. I'd like to just take a moment and embarrass my friend, uh, Tess Abraham. Can you come here for a second? We didn't have this plan, but I'm sure he's not totally surprised that it was going to happen. This is why my friend Abraham from Ethiopia and his family joins us. Uh, he's a pastor there. And uh, he's studying at Concordia Seminary, and uh, could you just give him a little brief reading? And... Good morning. 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 Good morning.
education. Uh, and today we see with my family, uh, my wife, my beloved wife, in New Sunday, uh, who lives that place, and my daughter, Marcus, uh, my son, Emmanuel, and Mary. Yeah, uh, I'm very much like this uh, You see my brother, the brother of Walker, and also his congregation. I believe it's in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also would like to bring the greetings from your brother and sisters in Ethiopia, and uh, we are very much glad to be here. Thank you for giving this chance to offer the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abraham, and I hope we can stay for our potluck as well uh, uh, get forward. <laughs> Please rise. The Lord be Kingdom to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thank you. 